Coming up tonight, a businessman is accused of cheating high-profile lawyers in an alleged $1 billion fraud scheme. No one is safe till all of us are safe. I'm getting my shot. Get yours too. The government rolls out more videos encouraging Singaporeans to get their COVID-19 shots. And a big disappointment for fans, May Day's concert at the National Stadium gets delayed again. This is The Straits Times News Night. Good evening, I'm Chow Suen. A Singaporean businessman accused of being involved in a billion-dollar fraud scheme has allegedly cheated several notable names in Singapore's legal fraternity. Eng Yuzhi, director of NV Asset Management and NV Global Trading, is said to have swindled investors into putting their money into nickel deals that never took place. Arrested in February, Eng had 18 charges against him for cheating, fraudulent trading and forgery. And today, he was slapped with another 13 similar charges. He is accused of criminal breach of trust involving more than $200 million. The alleged victims named in the new charges include the general counsel for Tomasic International, Pek Siok Lan, criminal lawyer Sunil Sudison, and former president of the Law Society, Theo Shen Yi. Ms. Peck was allegedly cheated of $5.5 million, Mr. Sunil of $1 million, and Mr. Teo of $87,000. Ng is out on bail of $1.5 million, believed to be the highest sum imposed since electronic monitoring was introduced as a condition of bail in 2018. Also today, the Ministry of Health and a senior infectious diseases specialist have hit back at a group of Singapore doctors who had called for the vaccination of youths to be suspended. MOH saying that reports about a 13-year-old American boy's death did not give heart failure as a cause, as alleged in the doctor's open letter, and the matter is still under investigation. Meanwhile, not for the first time, NCID's Associate Professor David Lai wrote a Facebook post calling out the same small group of doctors who were once again misleading and misinforming the public, noting that three of the doctors were involved in an earlier letter calling for children to be given traditional COVID-19 vaccines instead of the mRNA ones. Here's what Professor Lai told The Straits Times. If our parents listen to these doctors and then do not vaccinate their children, what will happen uh, if this Delta variant you know, gets out of control? Some children will end up in ICU. And I just wonder, you know, who will be responsible then? Now, our government has to be responsible and act in the best interest of to protect our children. So I think this is the, the point about, uh, about this whole issue. And in fact, many countries uh, are starting to vaccinate their children uh, once they realize that outbreaks can occur among children. US has started, Israel, who initially uh, was reluctant, uh, now that they have seen school outbreaks with the Delta variant, they started vaccinating their children. So what we are doing in Singapore is not uh, really uh, too unusual. It's because of the situation that we need to protect our children in the face of this more transmissible variant that can cause more severe disease. And after a month-long break, it's back to school for students, with a staggered return to class and COVID-19 measures in place. The first group returning to classrooms are in Primary 4 to 6, Secondary 3 to 5, JC and Millennia Institute. Other children will be back in full force by July 6. Students were seen wearing masks and observing safe management measures in class and during recess. Education Minister Chan Chun Singh said that the safety of our students, educators and staff remains our top priority. Now on to the latest COVID-19 numbers here. Nine new cases were confirmed today, with four in the community. The remaining five infections were imported. The Health Ministry also said that it has concluded testing at 105 Henderson Crescent and 66 Ingwat Street, after infections were found there. Seven positive cases were found at 105 Henderson Crescent, with none found at 66 Ingwat Street. 
Meanwhile, more testing operations are underway in the Bukit Merah and Red Hill areas, with residents of Block 103 Henderson Crescent getting tested today and tomorrow between 9am and 4pm. This follows the Health Ministry's announcement that four residents from three households in that block have tested positive for the coronavirus. Meanwhile, residents of Blocks 55, 56 and 57 Lingkok Baru are also getting swabbed after viral fragments were detected in wastewater samples there. And if you haven't gotten your shot yet, maybe this little clip might motivate you. Who knows when I'll get to do all this again? I never thought that I'll get COVID-19, but I tested positive. It was bad and you won't want to go through that. That's why I'm getting my shot. No one is safe till all of us are safe. I'm getting my shot. Get yours too. Remember the PCK Get Your Shot music video? Well, over the weekend, the authorities dropped yet another clip, encouraging young Singaporeans to get their vaccine. The clip was titled, I Got My Shot, Get Yours Too. As part of the national push to get two-thirds of our population vaccinated by National Day, the I Got My Shot campaign is stepping up. In fact, to encourage seniors to get their jab, videos in Tamil, Malay and Chinese, as well as the Chinese dialects, have popped up on the internet over the past weekend, featuring ministers including S. Iswaran and Ong Ye Kung, along with celebrities such as Xiang Yun and DJ RZ. Now let's take a look at what's been making waves online today. Sneaking into cinemas just last week, Fast and Furious 9 kicked into high gear and went from 0 to 100 in the blink of an eye. The highly anticipated blockbuster has brought in a smashing 1.28 million Singapore dollars over just four days and topped the weekend box office. This is despite a seating restriction cap of 50 persons per cinema screen. The film has overtaken last year's four-day weekend openings for Train to Busan Peninsula, Tenet and Mulan, when seating capacity was similarly restricted. Fast and Furious 9 was also the number one movie in the world over the weekend, earning a whopping 404 million US dollars. The film officially zooms into Singapore cinemas from the 1st of July. And not again, Taiwanese rock band Mayday has postponed its Singapore concert set for September 4th this year. The concert will now take place on December 3rd next year. The concert will also have a new name, Mayday Fly to 2022, live in Singapore. It's the second time the concert has been rescheduled from its original date of February 27th this year. Tickets for the show will be honoured for the revised date. But if you can't make it, fret not. Refunds are available for those who can't be there. Now, what do Thailand's tuk-tuk and K-pop have in common? Well, until the pandemic, not much. Some drivers had never heard of these K-pop stars before the virus hit. But now their Thai fans are helping these drivers survive the loss of tourist customers. Unexpected help came to Bangkok's tuk-tuk drivers this year from K-pop-obsessed youth when they started buying ads, celebrating their idols' birthdays and album launches from grassroots businesses. Over the last few months, young fans have mobilised to put up banners of their favourite K-pop idols on these iconic vehicles for a month at a time, providing a new source of income for struggling drivers and helping several hundred drivers so far. Now before we go, if you've had your online account hacked recently, you're not alone. With nearly 4 in 10 Singaporeans reportedly falling prey to cyber criminals last year. To counter this is the new Better Cyber Safe Than Sorry awareness campaign, launched by the Cyber Security Agency of Singapore. These videos, for example, give tips on how to spot signs of phishing and encourage the use of strong passwords. CSA says surveys it conducted last December revealed that while more were aware of cyber threats, many still did not believe that they will be targeted, a perception that they hope to change. Now, if you're still using 123456, perhaps it's time to change your passwords. 
And that wraps up the Straits Times News Night. Do visit straitstimes.com for more news and videos. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel by hitting the button below. Keep safe and I'll see you tomorrow.